then down here you'll see Get More Themes. So open this in a new window or in a new tab or whichever you prefer. And go to the theme directory. Then you can dig through here until you find one you like. You can search through here as well to find one that matches the look you're going for. Okay, so I search for business and I can pick through, pick any of these that I want. You can also do a Google search to find themes if you want to do it that way. So what I'm going to do is click on the name of the theme that I want to use. From here, I can download it and I can preview it. So let's have a preview first. Okay, so if I like that one, I can go ahead and download it here. And again, download it to a directory on our computer where it's easy to find and upload. Now we'll go back to our cPanel, then again to our file manager. And this is similar to installing plugins. What we're going to do now is go to our directory that our blog is in, go to wp-content, and then you'll see the themes directory in here, go inside themes, and then we upload our theme into the theme directory. So again, we browse for it. It's called Black Globe. Upload. Okay, it's uploaded. Then we go back here, click on it, extract. And then delete the zip file that we left behind. Now back to our WordPress blog. Let's just refresh our themes page here. And you'll see that our theme has now appeared in here. Now all we have to do, click on it. And it gives us a preview here. If we like it, just activate up in the right corner here. And our theme has now been set. We visit our site now. You'll see that the theme has been set to the one we chose. Now it's time to change some settings on our blog to make it work the way we want it to work. From the dashboard, go to settings right near the bottom here. Then in here you have your basic settings. We set some of these when we were setting the blog up in Fantastical. So from here you can change your blog title, the tagline, the WordPress address, and the blog address. And they can be in different spots. The email address, membership. Now, if you want anyone to be able to register, click this. Otherwise, registration is turned off unless you register them from within the back end here. And the roles that the new user will adapt when they subscribe. You can set your time zone here. Down here, the date format that you want to use within your blog. And down here the time format you want to use. In the week that it starts, you save your changes for the general options. Now we have writing options. There's a number of things that you can set in here to match your preferences to the way you want things to work. You have here emoticons and whether it should collect and valid XHTML automatically. The default post category, you might want to set this and then you can change it during the time of post. So if most of the time you're going to be blogging on a specific subject, this would be a good time to set the default. So we'll set it to affiliate marketing. Default link category. We haven't set up our link categories yet. We'll do that in a minute. You can post via email by setting the mail server, the login name and the password and then you can just email your entries in and it will post them to your blog automatically to the category you set here. And then down here we have our ping list. The ping list automatically notifies 
update services that something has changed on your blog. In the resources document, you'll find a list of entries that you can just paste in here. So just grab all these and then copy and paste them into your blog. So just paste them in here. We'll save our changes. We'll come back to reading after we add some content discussion. This is how different parts of your blog are handled as far as the content is concerned. These options have to do with linking links into your blog and links out of your blog and you can set whether you're going to allow pingbacks and trackbacks. That's what these are here. So you can set these to your preference. Whether you want to allow people to post comments to your articles. If you do, you leave that checked. If you don't, uncheck it. Common author must fill out a name and email and then you have different restrictions down here that you can use as well. One thing I do suggest is that you have a comment is held for moderation checked. That way people can't go spamming your blog and get it posted right away without you seeing it. When you have everything in here set the way you want it, you can update. Now you also have comment blacklist down here. You can blacklist certain words down here and it will move the comment right to the spam folder. Like that one per line. We flew by this one here, but you can also do the same thing, but instead of moving it into the spam folder, it's going to move it into the moderation queue up here. Down here you have the ability to handle how avatars are going to work. Click save changes when you're happy with that. Okay, media, this is where you set the sizes of the image files in your blog, the way they're going to be resized. Privacy. This just allows you to set whether you want the search engines to ignore it or list it. Most of the time I expect you're going to want it to be listed, but there are cases when you may not. Okay, permalinks. This is where the search engine friendly URLs come in. What you're going to want to do is use a custom structure. And what we have in our resources document is a piece of code you put in here to set the search engine friendly URLs. This helps greatly with search engine optimization. So under search engine friendly URL, just grab this bit of code here, copy, and then paste it in and save the changes. Now you'll notice that in the box down here, we have some code. At this point, you need to copy this code. You need to go back to your control panel, then to the file manager again. Then you need to find a file called .htaccess. Now, normally you'd be able to see .htaccess in here. However, it doesn't seem to show on this particular server. But if it did show on here, you could just click on it, click edit, and then add the code in. Now, since it isn't showing, what I am going to do and what you can do is open up using an FTP client like FileZilla. Let's open up FileZilla. And then let's open up our server here. And then let's find .htaccess. There it is. And then you know, we'll download it into our working directory here. So we'll just do a download. Then we'll open it up. We'll just do an open with. Right click open with. And then just open it with WordPad or Notepad. And here's what's in it. So just underneath everything here, just paste in the code, save it, and then re-upload it. We'll go back to FileZilla, 
and then we'll click upload. Okay, and you can see 5770 bytes versus 393 bytes. So it did take. And that's all we have to do there. Now, normally you're not going to have to do that because usually on most servers it does show in here. Now, what that has done is it has given your URL the category and the post name within the URL instead of using this format where to have a question mark and then the post number it actually is search engine friendly because it has the name of the category and the name of the post in it. We already set miscellaneous. Now the only other thing we have to set is reading. And the reason we haven't set reading yet is because we actually have to have content in here and make a decision. The decision we have to make is if we want to have a static home page. In other words, a page that loads as your home page every time. And then behind that, you can have your blog in, in the regular format. If you don't want to do that, then it's just like a normal blog. It shows chronologically. So this is where we would set that. But we have to have a page here first if we're going to set a home page. So let's look after the content. We'll come back to this. What we're going to do is we're going to go to posts. And we're just going to delete this. Just check it. And then delete and apply. These are the posts that were made on install, so we don't need those. We're going to make our own in a minute here. Now, same with pages. Go to pages. And same thing here. Or you can actually just put your mouse over it and click delete. Okay, now I'm going to create a home page for this blog. It's very simple. Just add a page. So here's my page. Title goes here. You have a full editor down here. So we just put our article in. And of course, you can paste your articles in from somewhere else. Down at the bottom, you can select if you want to allow comments or pings. And I got these from our settings, which are the defaults for our whole blog. So all we have to do now is publish. And we now have a page sitting out there. But it isn't our home page. If we view our site now, you'll see that it doesn't come up on our home page, but it is showing underneath pages. So what we need to do is go to settings. And this is where we set our static home page. And that's, of course, providing you want to do this. You don't even have to use pages. If you don't want to, you can just use posts like a regular blog. So let's go to reading. Select the static home page. And then out of the drop down list, we pick the page that we want as our home page. Down here, we can set how many blog posts you want to see, how many posts are shown in the syndicated feed for each article and a feed show you the full text or the summary and the encoding of the page. Usually going to leave that in UTF-8. We'll save the changes. Now when we visit our site, you'll see that it has now become our home page. Next we'll go add a post and pick a category and then it'll start showing down the side here. So go back to admin, then we go add new post, and then we paste our post in or write it in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set our category. We can also put an excerpt down here if you want, just a part of the article. Some themes will use that some will not. So under categories, we will be talking about making money with affiliate marketing. 
and you can pick multiple categories if you need to. Up here you have tags. This is just like tagged and I think almost like a keyword. So you just put your tags in here you want to use. And then you can put more in there if you want. Now if you want to add media, you can insert music, videos, and images just by clicking up here. So say we wanted to import or insert an image, we can just click right there. And then we can either upload it from our computer or we can bring it in from a URL here. So all we'd have to do is put the URL to the image in here and give it a title. You can also give it a caption here how we want it aligned and we can link image to a URL if we want as well. If we want to do it from a URL. And then you have your media library where you can look at everything that is stored currently will show up in here. So let's upload something from the computer here. To browse. And we can bring in our image just by picking it. Okay, and then it is uploaded in here for us. Now we can set the title, the description down here, the link URL, etc. So that's how you get any media you want into your post. So now we just insert into post down here. And it has brought the picture into our post. Now same with video. If we want to insert a video here, we can add video. Then we can select the file we want here. Then we find a video file. Click upload. Now with video files, rather than upload it here, it might be a better idea to upload it with FTP and then link to it using the URL. So I'm going to cancel that. But that's how you can do it. And same with, with a music file or audio file. You do exactly the same thing here. It looks exactly the same. Again, you're going to either select the file or the URL and then insert it into your post. And here's gallery. And this will show us the media that we have in our media gallery. Okay, and then when we're done, we just click publish. Now we go visit our site. You'll see that under categories, we have making money in affiliate marketing because those are the ones we chose. It's under our archives here. If we click on that, and there's our article within there. Now there's a couple more things we need to talk about and those are links. A lot of times you're going to want to put links off your blog, probably almost always, to one of your products or all of your products or to affiliate products. So we'll click on links. Now here are the links that are already on the page. If we go to view site and we roll down here, here's those links that are showing up. So what we want to do is delete all those. Okay, so those links are all gone. Now what we want to do is go to link categories. And this is an optional step. The link category by default right now is called blog roll. You can add more categories to post your links under if you want to have multiple categories of links or you can create one category or you can just rename this one. If we go into quick edit we can change blog roll to my links. Now some themes are going to show this and some are not. So it may or may not do anything at all but it's a good idea to have your categories make sense. And then we go and we just add our links now. So in here, you put the web address. 
Okay, so our description and then our link for our affiliate program or whatever we're linking to down here you can put your description which will show when people hover over top of your link okay down here select your category and of course you can add some more from here target if you pick that one it's going to open in a new page down here is just some notes right in here we just have some notes for your own use down here you can put an image address and an RSS address to go along with this link. Okay, so when we have that, we click Add Link. And then you just go ahead and add all your links in there. The link was added. Now if you go down to Edit, this was where your links will show. And you can change them if you need to. Now let's go back to our site one more time. And you see under Links, your own home-based business. Let's go back to admin and just go over one thing with the template that shows you how to modify the sidebar here. Let's go to widgets underneath appearance. Might be under themes in some versions of WordPress. Widgets allow you to customize the sidebar so it looks the way you want. So what you can do is just add anything from this side into your sidebar and it'll replace what's already on there. So if we want to show our pages and then we want to show our recent posts then our archives and categories and a tag cloud RSS recent comments and now if you have these out of order you can just grab a hold of them and move them around like so when you're happy with that just save the changes now we'll view our site and you notice that the sidebar will have changed as you see it now matches our layout. Now let's talk about an easy way that you can add advertisement such as AdSense to your blog. Let's go back to the admin area. Then let's go to widgets. And this will be an easy way that you can add an advertisement in your sidebar. Of course you'll have to pick a pattern that will fit in the sidebar. All you have to do is add a text element and then we can take the text element and move it where we want it Then we can edit it and in here you can put any text you want now AdSense and most other advertising programs are just going to give you some code and you can just paste that code in here for instance if we were going to put an AdSense ad in there what we'd want to do is collect is use a vertical ad so one of these will, any one of these will work in there. Let's go with 160 by 600, and then set your colors and so on accordingly. Then grab the code. Now we'll just paste it in here. And you'll see up here we have a place we can put a title. So you have to put a title in there that goes along with AdSense terms of service if you're using AdSense. Or you can put whatever you want here if you're not using AdSense. If you're using your own advertising or you're selling advertising space to individual companies, you can put whatever you want here. I'll just put sponsored links. Click done. Save the changes. Now we'll go view our site. Okay, and here is your AdSense code right over here. Of course it hasn't had time to crawl it didn't set the colors properly however that is how you set it up and you can put any advertisement in the sidebar you want